Good evening. Tonight marks one of the more important Shaivite observances of the year, Tripurari Purnima, or Kartik Purnima, which in Aelia commemorates the destruction of the three fortresses of the demons by Lord Shiva. Now, it is often asserted by some that Lord Shiva is somehow not a Vedic god, something I have repeatedly demonstrated to be untrue, with the mythology of Lord Shiva quite clearly and repeatedly referentially expressed in reverence within the Vedas and Vedic layers of texts. So too it is with the myth of Lord Shiva as Tripurantaka, the destroyer of the three fortresses. To quote from the Yajurveda, Mandala 6, uh, 2, 3, Arthur Berrydale Keith translation. The Azuras had three citadels. The lowest was of iron. Then there was one of silver, then one of gold. The gods could not conquer them. They sought to conquer them by siege. Therefore, they say, both those who know thus and those who do not. By siege they conquer great citadels. They made ready an arrow. Agni as the point, Soma as the socket, Vishnu as the shaft. They said, Who shall shoot it? Rudra, they said, Rudra is cruel, let him shoot it. He said, Let me choose a boon, let me be overlord of animals. Therefore is Rudra overlord of animals. Rudra let it go. It cleft the three citadels, and it drove the Asuras away from these worlds. The observance of the Upasads is for the driving away of foes." End quote. Now clearly, this is a considerably pared back description of events in comparison to the far more grandiose language employed in the much better known later tellings. And that is as we should expect. It does not necessarily mean that these Puranic era narratives are the result of significant additions by later chroniclers, but rather it speaks to the fact that these lines of Yajurveda text are from a long and complex rite, and that only the most salient details of the myth have been incorporated for the invocation of this stage of the formula. The form of the myth that would have been in more general circulation at the time, that the Yajurveda hymnal was codified, would quite likely have had various of these elements still included, and would form the basis for what came down to us in the latter narrative compendiums accounts. And indeed, we can still find various of the details in question found a reference in various other Vedic hymnals. Rig Veda Mandala 6, hymn 16, line 39, for instance, contains this descriptor for Agni. Mighty as one who slays with shafts, or like a bull with sharpened horn, Agni, Thou breakest down the forts. The notion of the solar chariot wheel, likewise, as well as the world spear of the Sky Father, being formed from the mountain tipped axis mundi wielded by his mighty hand, and the material around making active utilization of the codified expressions of faith, the rites as a weapon, is the linchpin of Rigvera Mandala 8, Hymnal 100, into many alia especially in combination with the notion of the goddess, Vakshasaraswati, as the active force for same, presented in Mandala 1025 as bending the bow of Rudra. Savitri likewise as the bowstring in the Mahabharata presentation of the Tr Tripurantanka instance in uh, MB 1360. And with the Rita bowstring of Brihaspati also foremost in mind for reasons that ought be obvious given the Vaksh as in-universe expression of Rita element so prominent in the theology of Shayana, and of course myself. There is more that could be said upon these suites of correspondences between the later Tripurantaka textual presentations and the underlying and archaic Indo-European mythic concept tree. But for now, it is enough. Suffice to say that Lord Shiva, in this episode too, is of incredibly ancient Vedic and far reaching saliency. Jai Mahakal. Om Namah Shiva.